I'm in London outside the Thames Magistrate Court where two people have today faced charges of female genital mutilation. Thames Magistrate Court today heard that a three-year-old girl required emergency surgery following what appears to have been an FGM, female genital mutilation, procedure. Uh, Section 45, I might add, of the Youth, Justice and Criminal Evidence Act prevents us from talking about personal details of this case, names and things like that. So we're going to stick to what can be reported and indeed what is being reported. Uh, so what we can say is a 42-year-old man and a 36-year-old woman are alleged to have mutilated a three-year-old girl in their own London home. This sick crime that's been happening for quite a long time here now is happening in the homes behind the scenes of, of seemingly regular people. It's a really, really sick crime. And they're said to have rushed the girl to hospital following the alleged incident uh, where the girl received emergency treatment for, to stem bleeding. It's a serious issue when these girls undergo this procedure. So often it involves in bleed outs, people have died because of this. So it was a serious rush at the hospital. And when they were asked at the hospital what had happened, they are said, the court heard, to have blamed it on a household accident. One can only imagine what kind of accident that would have been. Now, the charges, let's look at the charges. The woman is a dual Ugandan British national, and she's charged with genital mutilation of a female, but she's also charged with failing to protect a girl at risk of female genital mutilation. But here's when it gets even weirder, because she's also been charged with possession of extreme pornographic images that involved a human and a dog. A human and a dog. But it, she was also, by the way, also charged with distributing an indecent photograph of a child. And the charges remain weird when you look at the man as well. He was a Ghanaian national. He's been charged with FGM and also charged with failing to protect a girl at risk of FGM. But he's also been charged with possession of extreme pornographic images, like the woman, but this time involving a human, a snake, and a horse. These people are sick. These people are sick. If these crimes do be turn out to be true, if these alleged crimes are true, then this is sick. It's hard to think of anything sicker. Now, as I say, these are only charges and it will be heard at a trial at the Old Bailey at the end of this month. And I will be there and I'll be reporting on it because it's important we know about these things that are happening. But it's also important to know why these things matter. So FGM has been illegal since 1985. For decades, it's been completely illegal and yet it's been happening at, as we know at a massive massive scale and it's not just in pockets of this country it's happening all over the country in our capital city it's been doing uh, been done in the homes of seemingly regular people and the NSPCC prevention of cruelty to children estimates 137,000 women and girls are affected by FGM in England and Wales 137,000 they're the ones they know about by the way think how often this goes unreported. Think how often so many girls are terrified to go to the police or talk to anybody about this happening. One can only imagine the real number, the real number of this happening here. So the NHS has also shown us that between 2016 and 2017, 5,391 new cases were referred to them, again, of female genital mutilation. And despite this, despite this, a case like this has only gone to trial three times, three times since 1980. Five. And by the way, each time, no justice was served. So we're going to have to wait to see what happens now. We've got to wait until the trial. But I've got a few questions. Because if our government really cares about this, shouldn't more be done? If we know that hundreds of thousands of cases exist across the UK of women who've had this done to them abroad and in the UK, then why haven't more come to trial? And why hasn't justice been served? And as far as I'm concerned, and I hope you agree, whether this happens on English soil or whether it happens abroad, this is something that our own security services and our own police should be looking at. I'm extremely concerned that in this country the, the, the treatment of young girls in this way is being completely ignored and I would like to see more money, more resources poured into helping young girls and giving them the support to come forward and talk about these issues. And I also want to see that when trials like this happen that justice is actually served. Let's hope that that's what happens later this month. But also we should be thinking about the politicians we elect and we should be thinking about the politicians who are already in Westminster. Why isn't enough being done? And why is it when politicians come forward about the abuse of young girls, they are so often slammed down as racist? This is a serious problem 
and I hope it's solved soon. So I'll check in soon, we'll report on the trial, and until then, let's wait and see. I'm Jack Buckby for the Rebel.media. To follow this case and to find out what happens at the trial, and for more content from me and the rest of the Rebel team, please be sure to like and subscribe.